Hi everyone, today I'm going to share with you my special guest item coming from AZA, known as the Cube 360 Liquid AIO. Now, why do I say guest? Based on the fact that AZA products is not sold here in Singapore, and they have created quite a number of unique PC case, which is different from your normal PC case. If you guys are curious about how the cases look like, you can click on the URL in my description and it will take you to their official website. And having to say this, right, I did engage them, but somehow um, didn't get the opportunity to showcase their unique case, hopefully, probably at the later stage. Now, back to the topic where I talk about this uh, Liquid AIO, I'll be sharing with you all the accessories, how to mount it on an Intel platform, the AMD platform, and also to do the thermal test on a high-end processor. With this said, do take note that I'll be conducting this test in room temperature, 31 degrees Celsius. Now, first of all, I'd like to thank Aza to have provided this unit for me to share with you guys and to Block Soda to have done the arrangement on the delivery. Let's begin. When you unpack all the accessories off from the box, what you will get is first the instruction manual to show you how to do the mounting and what is needed to be done. And all these accessories are packed in a nice ziplock bag. Now, before I talk on to the accessories, the liquid cooler do support AMD and Intel platform. For AMD, it support FM1, FM2, FM2+, AM2, AM2+, AM3, AM3+, AM4, and the current platform, which is the AM5. As for Intel, it support 1150X, 1366-1200 and the current one which is the 1700 socket and also for the future generation which is the 1851. For the accessories you'll be provided with a AMD mounting bracket. This is where you house your block or should I say the cold plate. An Intel bracket, an Intel back plate. And for the Intel back plate you can adjust accordingly to the model of your processor. See? It's pretty nifty. Next, you'll be ushered with four Intel standoff, four AMD standoff, fastening board for you to hold your processor, or should I say, the uh, AIO block to your processor. Four spacer, these are rubber, not plastic, good touch. Total of 12 fan screws for you to mount your fan to your radiator. And these are quality screws, which I like. They don't rust. Total of 12 short screws. This is where you mount your radiator to your case. And these are of good quality screws too. And I like the way that they do it. You know, some radiator, right, they have this round shape and it's not flat. This will definitely catch the radiator very well on the case itself. Next, you have a fan extension. This is meant for you to plug your fan uh, connector to the motherboard header, which I will show you later. This is a extension ARGB connector, a 2 gram thermal paste, and it comes with three fans. And of course, the radiator and the block. When I remove all these fans from its respective Ziploc bag, First impression when I hold the fan, they are very sturdy. It doesn't flex, see? And on four corners, be it the front or the back, they have rubber pads. This is to absorb the vibration that will cause noise. And this is a seven blader. And if you notice, right, there are some scoop lines, which some of you will witness this on a GPU which I believe this is to scoop more air to your radiator. 
and this is the infinity mirror nice touch protective ring that's good now besides this right at the side of each fans there are some patterns which makes it unique and each fan you are shared with two short cables one is the 4-pin PWM fan connector the other is the 3-pin 5 volt ARGB connector and these are short reason being right when you mount this to the radiator you will daisy chain accordingly as in like the ARGB to the ARGB and the fan connector to the fan connector so this make cable arrangement very tidy you don't have to worry about the cable mess see it's done so you can just tuck nicely and this might be at the back of the case itself so that you only see the, fr the front now earlier on I mentioned about the extension well if this is not long enough to sorry this end yeah if this end is not long enough to reach in fact it is not you can use this extension plug it and to plug this to your motherboard one of the uh, fan header CPU fan header same goes to the ARGB this is an extension you can clip to here yeah and to plug this end to your motherboard ARGB 5 volt 3 pin connector now as for the spec of these fans I will briefly go, go through and you can take a look at the top where it shows you all the specification now these are all 120mm fans with a thickness of 25mm and they are all ARGB with a infinity mirror effect at the center now the RPM lowest it can go is 500 and the max it can go is 200, 2000 and these are hydro bearing fans and each fan will draw at a 0 0.28 ampere that is for your fan to spin and as for the ARGB it's rated at 0 0.36 ampere so having to say so right if you to daisy chain this tree which is drawing at a 0 0.28 ampere so total up it will be lesser than one ampere so it's safe to plug onto your motherboard header without any issues and of course these are running on 12 dc it has a air flow of 57.5 cfm and a pressure of 1.88 millimeter h2o next will be the block and the radiator starting off with the radiator the measurements are as follow from here to here is 404 millimeter and from the top to the bottom in fact these are the sides so from here to here is at 121 millimeter now for thickness do take note as this end over here is protruding out else for the other end is not so for the thickness of this from here to here is at 35 millimeter and as for the radiator from here to here it's at 28 millimeter judging by the structure of the fins itself i believe these are 20 fins per inch as you can see they are pretty narrow between the radiator and the block itself you have a nice braided hose and something unique about this liquid AIO the block itself is not a pump this is very light the pump is in fact this whole section over here and this is meant to plug to your AIO pump on your motherboard make sure you plug this to the AIO header or the water pump header and not fan or system fan header as this pump here right running at a max speed of 4000 rpm now on the block itself on the surface you will have a subtle logo azar and at this triangle section at the top 
this is ARGB effect. The measurement of this block from here to here is 70 mm. From here to here is at 70.5 mm. And as for the thickness of the block, from the cold plate end to the top is at 85 mm. The block comes with one cable which is meant for your ARGB, which is for the effect over here. And over at this end you can swivel. And as mentioned, this block is very light as the pump is not located here. Instead, it's located at this end. And speaking of this end, these are not swivelable, it's fixed. Before you prepare the brackets on your motherboard, make sure you prepare your radiator first. And I'd like to talk something about fixing the fan. As you can see over here, I've already done all the daisy chain. And when you're mounting the fans with these screws over here, the long screws, do not fasten them all the way in as you will need to align all the screws on its respective hole and sometimes you need to adjust the fan so that the screw will bite to the screw hole on the radiator itself. So make sure you do this. So once you have all in right then fasten all the screws I will start off with the Intel platform these are all the items that you will need the mounting bracket the back plate the four spacer the four standoff and the four locking bolt now all this that you see over here you have to mount on the motherboard first I know that some of you might be wondering hey why not mount this to the block well, they have a different mechanism, which to me, this is not new, but to some of you might be new. This is a very good locking mechanism whereby you take a look at all this area here, protruding out. In fact, you have to flip over, right? These are teeth, as in like to bite to your block. And how this works is, assuming everything is fixed to the motherboard, and you apply thermal paste, and this is where you sit your block and to turn. And this is how it works. As mentioned, assuming this is on the motherboard itself, it's there, but it's not tightened. All is needed, right? Your processor is over here. So what you need is to guide this over here, as you can see, towards the slot over here. So when you do this, right, and you just turn, and when you turn, right, it the teeth is going to bite, I mean, bite the whole block. So having to say this right, when you apply pressure, when you apply pressure to your IHS, all this will be gripping to your block, which will give a even pressure. Though this is troublesome, but it's a very effective mechanism. I believe that the performance on the thermal will be very good. Okay, first off, to mount all this in, prepare your back plate first. Now, as mentioned to you, right, you will need to adjust accordingly to the model over here. I know right now I'll be using a 1700 socket. So as you can see, there are labor. Okay, as you can see, there are labor model over here and labor model over here. The 1700 socket labor is sitting over at the yellow cap which is at the middle so i will push this to the middle okay okay for better illustration this is most top which is the first slot this is the second slot and this is the third slot so i'll move this to the center same goes to this and this and this next Remove off the double-sided tape. This is meant for you to tape to the beneath of the board so that this will not drop. I'm not going to remove this just to show you. So next thing you need to do is to flip your motherboard to the back. Remove off the tape. Then align these four screws over here, or should I say the threads, to your hole of the motherboard. Once you have done the alignment, 
Okay, this is out. Once you have done all the alignment properly, flip your motherboard over. Okay, let me just do this properly. See, the holes are all aligned to the uh, holes on the motherboard. And once you have done this right, next thing to do is to place your spacer. Now, placing your spacer right, take note. The rubber spacer, I mean the rubber spacer, one side is with a smaller hole, the other side with a bigger hole. And your standoff right, looking at the thread over here, this is where you place at the bigger hole end, which is like this. Okay, and this is to your motherboard. So you screw it down. I illustrate again the spacer with the bigger hole, not the smaller hole. The bigger hole will match to this grooving over here. Okay, don't do it this way. If you do it this way, right, you can't even put it in. So make sure that you have placed this section over here to the spacer. Then from here, right, this is where your screw track will go to the motherboard and not this end. Don't do it this way, alright? It's wrong. You have to do it this way. And then once you have done, right, fasten everything. This is nicely done. So next thing is to place this bracket to the tress. And you don't have to fasten with the bolt. That will be later. Right now, I'll just adjust the angle. Now, please do not do this, all right? It's just for illustration purposes because I don't have a processor. So assuming that you have a processor, let me just remove this first. Assuming you have the processor in place, apply your, clean off your IHS with alcohol, as in like the processor top with alcohol. Then apply your thermal paste. Once you have done your thermal paste right, over at the block end, make sure you remove this plastic cover off. And again, apply alcohol to clean off the residue that is sitting between the tape and the core plate. Once that's done, right, all is needed to slot all this to here. So when you place this down, right, again, please do not do this because I'm doing without a processor, but just to illustrate. So align this down properly and when you grip on it, right? Okay. See, you hear a click. And when you turn, right, this bracket will lift up. And this is holding the block in place, see? All right, just an illustration. So again, what is needed? slot this to this slots over here and turn lightly turn while having the pressure on the uh, processor the core plate and the processor you're pressing it down and turn okay this will lift up once this is lifted up right you know that it's in place then screw down your bolts Then when everything is in place, I see like all the bolts are down, you can start to screw the uh, bolts to tighten the block to your motherboard. So as you can see, all right, this is stunted, but it doesn't matter. So once this is down, right, what you need to do is just to take a screwdriver to screw diagonally and fasten the block in place. For AMD platform, it's even faster. Based on the fact that these are what you needed, the uh, mounting bracket, mounting bolt, and the standoff. First thing you need to do, unscrew all this on the original brackets and to remove them. And over here, right, this is where you place your standoffs, which is like this. Now for the standoff, take note, over here, there is a black cap. This is supposed to face downwards towards your motherboard. So you screw the standoff this way. 
Okay, this is your motherboard. Screw it this way. Do not screw it this way. So with this say, I'm going to fasten all. The standoffs are done in place. Next is to mount your bracket. Now, before you mount your bracket, apply the thermal paste on your IHS. Now, you guys might be curious, how can I do it such perfect square? Well, I do have another video you can click on the top right hand corner and I'll show you the way on how I apply the thermal paste and this always work without failure. We'll have 100% good performance. Now, based on the fact this thermal paste, I'm using the original thermal paste that is provided by Azar on this liquid AIO. So next thing to do is to place the bracket. Once you've done that right, it's time for you to put the block. And as mentioned to you, I will remove this. Once this is done, I will spray some alcohol on the cold plate. So that all the residue of the tape that is contacting the cold plate right to sit for a while, then I will clean it. Once this is done right, it's time for you to mount the cold plate. Okay, this is done. So right now to mount the cold plate, or should I say the block to this, all is needed, even pressure. Okay, again, the slot of this to this. Place it in nicely. Once it's seated in, right? Okay, you hear a click. Now, still holding the even pressure, make sure you align nicely. And why do I say hold this? Because you are pressing the uh, thermal paste towards the cold plate and your IHS. Then next is to fasten the bolt, which I will do here. Still holding on to the block itself, make sure it's straight. Then screw the bolt down so that your block will be in place. Now speaking of the arrangement itself, make sure that the hose which you see right now right, is facing towards your M.2 and not towards your RAM. This is the correct orientation. You will yield better thermal results if you do it this way. Okay, I'll fasten. So next thing you will need to do is to tighten diagonally. So do it evenly so that you have even pressure. And for this, I don't really have to worry about uneven pressure as mentioned to you, right? Showing you that, okay, this is not AMD, this is Intel, right? But both have the same locking mechanism. As I mentioned, all these teeth over here, right, will bite on your block and having even pressure throughout. So imagine that all this biting your block and it's pressuring down, it's almost flat. It's like balanced. Once everything is fixed nicely, things to take note when you're plugging the connection. I'll start off with the pump, which is located over here. Make sure you connect this pump header to the pump or should I say the pump connector to the pump header on the motherboard and not CPU fan or chassis fan or system fan which there is an enlarged picture on my right that says WP or water pump so this is the location that I will plug for the water pump and as for the fan which you see earlier I've attached to the extender or extension this plug it to your CPU fan. Not an issue because three of the fans, in fact, one is drawing 0.28. So when you total out, right, it's below one ampere. So it should not be a problem to plug this to your CPU fan header. Now, once you've done this right, 
Next, you will take note is the pump ARGB. As for the fan ARGB and the pump ARGB, okay, let me just grab the fan ARGB. Now, this is for the fan, this is for the pump. Do not daisy chain them as in like, you know, connect and connect to one ARGB connection point. Reason being right, the pump itself, this ARGB is taking much more load. In fact, it's 0 0.78 ampere. I know you can daisy chain, but let it have ampere, I mean enough ampere to run the ARGB. Same goes with the fan. So plug this two at a separate ARGB header, which I have here too. So I'll plug one to each. Before showing you the benchmark and the performance of this liquid AIO, these are the components that I'll be using. A Ryzen 9 7950X processor, SROC motherboard, which is the X670E Steel Legend with the latest BIOS, and the RAM is 32GB kit. Now, what I've done is on the OC Tweak or Tweakle, I have set the XMP profile, which is this. To Expo 6000, then followed by an offset on the V core, which is this, and I'll set it to minus 50 milliwatt. And on advanced mode under AMD overclocking, I've done the precision boost overdrive, which I've set to manual, and these are my settings for PPT, TDC, and EDC. Now having to set these figures over here, right, when you see the benchmark, it doesn't mean that it will show you this. It depends on how much cooling you can produce or to provide the system, then it will just pull accordingly. Besides this, on curve optimizer, I've set all cores to negative 15. And on the hardware monitor, where you see that my pump and fan, which you can see, this is the fan, the radiator fans, and the water pump. The water pump, I'm setting it to full speed. In fact, it's full speed. You can't change the uh, pump as it's not PWM. So it will be running at full speed. And for the fan, which are the radiator fans, I have done a custom curve, whereby once it reaches at 70%, that means say the temperature is reaching at, sorry, the temperature is reaching at 70, it will pump the fan to 100 max. In Windows, this is what you'll be seeing. First off, the orientation. This is in fact a live feed. As you can see, it's moving. And just to show you, the temperature is still 30 degrees Celsius. So I'm testing this based on 30 degrees Celsius and this live feed will always be here. Now how I conduct the test is pretty straightforward. I will first run 30 minutes and once it's stopped, I'll let it idle for 10 minutes. Once done with the 10 minutes of idling, I will conduct a 10 minute throttle test and to record down the temperature and such. Things that you need to take note is the CPU temperature, the clock clock, as in like how much cooling it provides, it will pull to the megahertz. And this is in fact the average. Why do I say average? Let me just pull my hardware info. 
see this figure over here that you see is in fact this so I'm not showing you all the calls I will be showing you the average so as I mentioned depends on how much cooling you can provide the system it will just pull so it can be 5 gigahertz or maybe 5.1 or 5.2 so we shall see besides this take note on the uh, vcall which i've actually done an offset so it will not be so drastic as in like 1.35 and such probably you will just hover around 1.1 volt or maybe 1.08 volt and this is the uh, CPU usage, as in like when I run the uh, Cinebench R23, right, you will just toggle 100 and fluctuate at times. Then the power package, take note on this. Now, as for the power package, right, I have mentioned to you I've done the PPT, TDC, and EDC on the PPO2. So this figures over here, right, though I've set on my UEFI, it doesn't mean that it will pull to that figure that I've set. It still depends on the uh, cooling on the system itself. So you just pull accordingly and how much it need, it will just pull. And this will show you the consistency. Now as for the radiator fans, this, as I mentioned to you, I've set a custom curve. So once it reach 70 degrees, right, it will pump the fan to max. Just to show you that what the fan can run at, at max speed. And the pump is, as always, at 4000 and above, which is at full speed. Other than that, these are the other temperatures like the motherboard, the M.2 and the RAMs itself. I've done with the first 30 minutes, so I let it idle for 10 minutes. And as you can see here, the time that I've done, the 30 minutes. And these are all the stats over here that you can see. Max temperature is 77. So after the 10 minutes, I will be conducting the actual run and to record it down and to let you witness that will be a 10 minutes run 10 minutes have passed and the idle temperature will be 48 degrees celsius so right now i'm going to run the 10 minutes and we'll do the actual recording then you can take a look at the uh, temperature and such so here we go Almost time right now, in fact, last 3 minutes, as you can see, it's consistent at 70 to 77 degrees Celsius. In fact, it's most of the time 77 or 76 hovering around there and it can hold at 5 gigahertz. And having the uh, fans ramping up at full speed, which is quite near 2000 RPM, as listed on the specs, plus or minus 10%, which is acceptable. And best part is the pump is very strong. Now having a good pump, right, you will be able to actually achieve 5 gig with the settings that I've actually done. Or even if I were to let it run at default, right, should not have a problem to hover at 5 gigahertz. So based on the fact that this cooler is able to tame the uh, 7950X which I'm using, though I have limited it, but be whether I limit or not to limit, at 5 gigahertz, not a problem. As I've encountered some of the liquid AIO right out there, those that are of the earlier generation, they can't even, I mean, they can't even hold at 5 gig. I am utterly impressed with this liquid AIO coming from Aza, known as the Cube 360. You guys have been it. At load, it's hovering around 76 to 77 degrees Celsius and it can maintain at a clock speed of 5 GHz. That's impressive. And mind you, the room temperature in my room is 31 degrees Celsius. In fact, it hovers around 30 to 31 degrees Celsius. And best part of all, as I have foreseen, and my prediction was correct, based on the mounting mechanism. Now, this is a old mounting mechanism, which I'm glad that Azar have bring them back. As this, right, 
is the main point whereby it pulls your whole block evenly as in like the pressure as there are teeth surrounding it so it bites 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 so it's actually around your whole block so when you cram this thing down right it will give even pressure and when you're fastening the boat right you don't have to worry if you were to tighten one area too tight or what but of course make it balanced so the whole thing will just cram in place and to give very good thermal results thank you Azza to bring this back now besides this right when I'm sitting away from this unit about three feet I can't hear a single thing be the pump or the fans when it's ramping up at max speed and the pump is consistently at 4000 rpm oh by the way it's also part of the reason why this temperature is that good because of the pump it's running very fast so it will bring all the hot fluid off from the block fast to the radiator once it passes through the, the radiator cooling the fluid you bring it back so the cycle is pretty fast very rapid so this is also part of the reason why the temperature is good now back to where i was as i mentioned i can't hear a single thing right now i deliberately place my microphone right in front of this whole unit in front of the radiator about one feet and the pump is over there i'm going to run a benchmark to let you listen to the noise and to justify what is actually going on that the fan is ramping up take a look at the blade when i click on the benchmark test you will see that the rotation will react with the motion so take a look at the blade right now i'm going to run the benchmark So that's the only noise that you will listen to. In fact, it's a very subtle hum. It's not a sharp pitch. And mind you, the fan is in fact blowing through the fins of the radiator and it's not drawing. That will even cause high pitch, but it doesn't. It just hum. It's so quiet. So imagine that if you were to place this inside a case and which is away from you, about one feet or two feet, and you ramp up all the fans, right? You still can't hear anything not even the pump i've moved the mic away from the system over here as you guys can hear the static i do apologize now back to where i was another thing which i like about this unit is the argb effects the diffusion is nicely done it's very bright in color and it's very vibrant best part of the whole argb system right i like the design of this pyramid I was so engrossed looking at it while benchmarking it's like looking around and replaying the video which i've shown you guys it's nicely done all right hope you guys have enjoyed what i've shared with you and i'd like to thank to Aza to have provided this unit for me to play with and to share with my viewers and also to block soda especially to block soda without you guys recommending Aza to me right i wouldn't have got this product which is not so here in Singapore. Thank you very much. And also for the delivery. With this say, if you guys are new to my channel and like my content, do remember to subscribe and to click on the notification bell button. Till then, take care. Goodbye. See ya.